G'day folks. I just thought I'd do a little video to show some of you a basic electrolysis tank that you can build at home. Uh, first of all you need a good container. My first one was basically a 20 litre bucket like this. You can use whatever you want really. These rectangular tubs are handy. Uh, if you're really desperate you can even dig a hole in the ground and line it with black plastic. That's been done plenty of times before. Then you need a good power supply. Direct current obviously. 12 to 24 volts, I wouldn't go any higher than 24. More current the best, but better. Uh, something like this little CB power supply just wouldn't even do it for this tank here. This battery charger would work. And you can have mixed results using PC power supplies. They are pretty sensitive to surges and other anomalies that will occur in the tank. So don't, don't be surprised if it shuts down in the middle of the night. Uh, these photocopy of power supplies. This is a Matsushita electronic one from a Xerox machine. This one here puts out about 20 amps at 13 volts or 4.5 amps at 40 volts DC. Pure clean DC too. Not like some of these power supplies which can have a bit of AC, they're not properly rectified or filtered. Now obviously the more current you get the better. If you're going to use a plastic 44 gallon drum as your tank Obviously you'll need a few hundred amps. A DC welder or industrial battery charger will do that nicely. Uh, next you have to set up your anode plates, which can be uh, preferably not zinc plated like this. Never stainless steel because that creates a uh, chromium solution in the water. Very toxic. So preferably just black steel like that. Or bits of raw unpainted sheet metal from computer cases work well. I've used bits of photocopier chassis, just any scrap steel, it doesn't have to be thick plate like this. I've never used this as an anode. Now obviously you want a space between your workpiece. In this example I'm using a uh, old Kubota mower pulley. You can suspend your part in the middle of the tank. So you've got gap underneath and gaps between the plates. Electrolysis generally needs line of sight to the piece being cleaned from the anode to the uh, cathode, the workpiece. Without that, you'll simply not clean the area that's being shaded from it. On complex assemblies like whole engines, you'll never clean the inside with it. You actually have to strip them down as best you can, get everything off, and just create line of sight from whatever anodes you're using. Move them around, make little inserts that go down underneath. You've got to have line of sight to your uh, workpiece. Okay, now this tank's set up to run. If there are electrolyte in there, it would probably work, although I've run out of alligator clips, so you obviously have to connect your negative lead to the workpiece. Uh, it's worth going out and buying some half-inch alligator clips so that you can clamp it on and make positive contact with the metal. And that's always your neutral lead. If you get the two mixed up, you'll start eating your workpiece away. And that's not fun. And obviously you make better connections than these on the sacrificial anodes, preferably solder them on, grind the coating back and solder them in hard, although uh, ring terminals will do for the time being. Although well, you'll probably find the connections do break down over time. They always do anyway, but just try and prolong that. And the positive lead always goes to your sacrificial anode, not to the workpiece. These will rust and decay. This will become clean. Always keep that in mind. But you can put another piece of scrap in place of a workpiece and switch the polarity around to clean the bulk of the rust off these when they become too built up. I do that quite regularly with my tank and it improves the efficiency significantly. That's a good example of a soldered connection on both of these plates. It hasn't started to corrode or break down. Obviously they're up out of the solution. Don't let your leads or your solder connections come in contact with the solution because they'll dissolve very quickly. Electrolysis attacks non-ferrous metals very quickly. Depending on the size of your workpiece, you can bridge the tub with a solid bar as long as it doesn't become part of the circuit. Or in many cases I've slung stuff off an overhead rail with a chain like the big pulleys for my shredding machine. I had to hang them up over, 
over the um, from the roof structure and use half a plastic 44 gallon drum to clean it. Uh, likewise non-ferrous metals I would not recommend putting in. It has a tendency to attack aluminium pretty quickly. Uh, generally just stick to ferrous metals, painted is fine. Paint comes off very easily in this system. Uh, rust, grease, grime, it generally all comes off. Afterwards you're left with a black anodic film which has to be rubbed down with Scotch Brite and hot water. You've got to dry it out as quick as possible. A little bit of surface rust builds up on cast iron but that's just its way of protecting itself. Once it dries out you'll notice it will start to rust a little bit but nowhere near as bad. This is an identical pulley which I've cleaned up and painted immediately afterwards. And as you can see there's a big difference. A bit of pitting in the rim where it's been machined but it create, makes for a much better finish. Now, chemical solution wise I'm using sodium bicarbonate. Uh, you can also use sodium carbonate which is called washing soda in the States. I'm yet to find washing soda in Australia. Uh, apparently it goes under the name Arm & Hammer washing soda in the US. So all my US viewers go grab some Arm & Hammer washing soda. Uh, percentage wise you don't have to be specific at all. I never measure my uh, water amount or my bicarb soda. I just chuck say three quarters of one of these one pound boxes straight in, mix it all up for a tank this size. This is about 50 litres. For a tank like this I probably use just a little bit less than half a box. So a quarter of a pound, if that. Probably wouldn't even need a quarter of a pound in a little tub like this. But it's all depending on how much current you're transferring through it. Obviously the more the merrier. Well not too much so you put half a pound in here it'd create a very strong solution and if you're running 50 amps through it which is going to really pull some current and work very well but you might overload the power supply. The stronger the electrolyte is the more current it, the more load it's going to put on the power supply. So you can afford to go a little bit weak it'll just take a lot longer. Okay, so while this cowling dries in convection mode, running about 130 degrees Celsius, I just think I'll go over some of the basic precautions for this. I suppose rule number one, never stick your hand in the tank while it's running. The current cascading off your skin will give you a bit of a jolt, and if you're really unlucky it might even get to your heart. Especially if you're running high voltage like 50 volts DC. It does do damage. Rule number two, don't use stainless steel anodes. They break down into hexavalent chromium. And likewise, excessive amounts of zinc can also create toxic solutions. Not a good thing. So just use plain black steel or just scrap from old computer cases and other unpainted things. Likewise, if you're cleaning lead-based paint off the uh, workpiece, avoid contact with the solution. Over time I think this also breaks down into sodium hydroxide elements so it could be harmful to the skin. Uh, yeah, just exercise basic electrical and chemical safety when working with it. And as long as you don't do anything too extreme it's generally safe enough to pour down the drain. It's only washing soda and rust and a bit of paint so it's not classified as a hazardous waste. Uh, so yeah, don't, don't put non-ferrous metals in it either doesn't do them any good. Oh, well, thanks for watching folks. If you've got any questions and queries about this, or if I missed anything, just let me know. Alright, I suppose one last precaution. The hydrogen bubbles that build up on the surface are explosive. They make a hell of a bang when they go off and they'll cover your walls with brown sludge like that. So uh, avoid smoking, welding or grinding nearby. Always use it in a well ventilated area. Don't l allow the hydrogen to build up to a dangerous level indoors. In an open or well ventilated garage like this where you've got gaps all the way around, it's fine. But if you try and do it inside a sealed room, you're going to end up with a hydrogen problem. And it will literally blow a room apart if it's too much. Oh, thanks for watching folks.